Hello and welcome to this video on lazy loading techniques in React. Lazy loading is a performance optimization technique that delays the loading of certain components until they are needed. This can help improve the initial loading time of a React application and reduce the amount of data transferred over the network. In this video, we will cover three different techniques for lazy loading components in React which are import on interaction, import on visibility, and the famous react.lazy. First, let's look at the import on interaction technique. This is a react.js project and I have already added a lazy component which is just going to return some text, which is this one. This is a lazy loaded component. So when this component will be loaded dynamically, then this text will be loaded in the browser now I am going to open up app.js file and I will remove all of this stuff from over here so that we can write our code to lazy load this lazy component. So the import on interaction technique involves using the import function to dynamically import a component only when it is needed. For example, let's say we want to load this lazy component and we can use the import function to do that. First, we are going to create a constant for our component. So component and this will be managed in the state set component using user state. And the initial value is going to be null. And we will also need to import user state. Now import on interaction involves a button click. So I'm going to add a function for handling the button click, which is this one. So when the button will be clicked, then we will use the dynamic import function and we will import this lazy component. We have to give the path of this lazy component and it is going to be the same that we use when importing any module. So for example, when you will import the lazy component, then you can use the same path over here or alternatively you can write this path directly over here as well and we don't need this import statement so this import is going to return a promise if it is successfully loaded then we are going to get the module as an argument in the function callback and what we can do is we can set the modules value into this component so we can use this set component and then we can use mod.default to set the components value. Now it's time to render a button when the component is not loaded and when the component has been lazy loaded, then we can directly render the component. So the component will be rendered like this when it is available, but before it is not available, then we can simply first check if the component is undefined or if it's null, then we can return a button with the caption load component and we can set the on click handler for this button and then assign the handle click function as the on click handler and that's pretty much everything that we need to do now let's see in the browser if this lazy component is indeed being loaded dynamically so this is how the button is currently looking and if I will open up the console, I will have to go to the network tab and let me just bring it somewhat up. You can see over here that the chunk for the lazy component is not here. Let's just refresh again and let's just scroll to the top. Now when I will click on this load component button, then you can see that the chunk for the lazy component has been loaded and here is the text which was being returned from the lazy component this is how we can import dynamically a component or we can lazy load a component based on some kind of interaction in our case it's this button click so when the button is clicked then the state is changed and this triggers a re-render of the component and the component will be returned because now it's available next Let's look at the import on visibility technique. This is somewhat complicated because this technique involves using the intersection observer API 
to lazy load components based on their visibility in the viewport. To use this technique, we need to wrap the component we want to lazy load in an element and use a ref to store the reference of that element. Then we can use the intersection observer API to observe the element and then import the component when it becomes visible in the viewport. Well, I know that it's too much to absorb by just listening to it. So let's see how the code looks like. First, I'm going to import use ref as well. Now let's initialize a couple of state properties. So const component and then set component equals to use state. This will be initialized with a null value. Similarly, we can initialize the observer and then set observer. This is for the intersection observer. This will also be initialized with a null value. And then we need the reference of the div element. So const element ref equals to use ref. And I'm going to pass null as an argument. We will also need use effect to observe the element by using intersection observer. So use effect. Now let's pass in a function as an argument for this use effect. The first thing that we need to do is to check if the observer has been initialized or not. If it hasn't initialized, then we can create a new object by using the intersection observer constructor. So new observer equals to new intersection observer. And we have to provide a callback. This callback accepts entries as an argument. So we have to observe the div and whenever the div will be in the current viewport, then this callback will be called. So if entries dot is intersecting, if the current div is in the current viewport, then this condition is going to be true. So if it's intersecting with the current viewport, then we will use the dynamic import to import the lazy component. The path is going to be the one which was in the previous example. And similar to what we did previously, we have to handle the promise. So then and then we are going to get the module and we are going to set the component state using the mod.default property and when it has intersected then we can stop observing the div so new observer dot disconnect can be called finally we can use the observer state to set its value so set observer with the new observer now after doing all of this we can start observing the div element so if observer is not undefined and if element refs dot current is also not undefined and then we can start observing the div let me just bring it up so observer dot observe element ref dot current so this current is going to represent the div uh, which you will see in a moment when we will return the div and we also have to take care of doing the cleanup so we can return a function which is going to check if observer is available if it is then we can simply call observer dot disconnect otherwise it is going to keep observing the div even after the component has dismounted and then finally this effect is going to come into picture when observer has changed now similar to previous example we will just have to return the component but if the component is not available then we have to return something else and that is the div which will simply say loading but we also have to add the attribute for the ref that we are using for the div and this is the element ref now here is one thing we have to do with this because this is 
based on intersection observer the initial loading state of the page should be such that this div is not visible in the current viewport because if it is visible in the current viewport then we will not be able to test our changes which involves first scrolling to this div and then the div will come into the current viewport and then the lazy component will load dynamically so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to add a bunch of line breaks actually so many line breaks so yeah it, this looks ugly but <laughs> we have to do this for this example all right now it's time to test our code to see if it's working well no scroll bar is here so that means something is wrong okay i think what i need to do is i need to enclose all of this in parenthesis yeah now it's working so let's go to the network tab and let me just zoom this dev tools out and let's clear everything now let's scroll down i hope that you can see the scroll bar on the right so the div is down there at the bottom and the point at which the div will come into the viewport the lazy component will be loaded see when we got to the absolute bottom then the chunk for the lazy component is loaded and here is the text and this is how you can lazy load a component based on its visibility the third technique that we will cover is using the react.lazy function this function allows us to wrap a dynamic import in a component that can be rendered like any other component and the react.lazy function returns a component that uses the suspense component to handle the loading state so in simple terms how react.lazy works is when it's time for a component to be rendered by react it will be loaded dynamically so let's see how this can be done I'm going to remove all of this stuff from over here and let's import suspense and let's also import react for react.lazy. Now first I'm going to create a constant for our lazy component. We will use react.lazy to wrap it into a dynamic import. So this is going to accept a function as an argument and inside it we will write the import function and then we have to provide the path of the lazy component like we did for previous two examples. So the path is this one. Let me press Alt Z, wrap this code into new lines. And that is pretty much everything for wrapping this component in react.lazy. Now what we can return is we can return the suspense component and then we have to provide a fallback for the suspense component like this and within the fallback i am going to add a div the div can have text like this i'm sorry loading and as a child of this suspense we can render this lazy component and that is pretty much everything that we need to do now one thing to note over here is that there will be no wait time for loading this lazy component but this will be loaded as a chunk because we are using the dynamic import to load it what it means is in a big application when there are like hundreds of components when there is the condition met to render any component then that component will be loaded dynamically instead of its code being fetched in the main bundle from the server when the application first loads and there is one mistake that i think we have done over here is that we have to return this import commands promise that will be returned so over here you can see that the component is here but let's just refresh this page again now you can see over here that this components chunk is being loaded and this is how we can use react.lazy and suspense to dynamically load a component and that's it we have covered three different techniques for lazy loading components in react which are import on interaction import on visibility and react.lazy each of these techniques can help to improve the performance of a react application by delaying the loading of certain components until they are needed i hope you found this video helpful
If you want to see the performance improvements for yourself, try implementing these techniques in your own React projects. Thanks for watching this video and don't forget to like and subscribe for more content like this and I will see you in the next one.